Hello everyone, this is Marco. Um, I've had a few requests recently just from viewers of my blog to record a sketch demo, so I thought I'd give it a try. I know it's customary to put music over these things, but I know personally I always seem to learn more from the demos where I can also hear the person speaking over it, um, as well as watching the person work, so I thought I would try a little voiceover on this. Um, this is when I was coming into this painting, I, have, I had absolutely no idea what it was I was going to paint. This is very raw. Um, I was actually watching TV through this. Uh, UFC was on, and I'm a big fan, so the TV beside me was on, and I had one eye on that. So this was really uh, a raw painting, and just to see if I can make something out of it. This is typical of one of the ways I will start a sketch. This is a sketch. This is not uh, something finished. And I would never work this way if I was, say, working for a client because it's, you don't know what you're going to come up with. But this is great just to explore your own mind and see what, you've, see what kind of shapes you can pull out. And it's, it's like improvising. And I find that really beneficial when you are doing a finished piece. So right away I'm trying to establish a full range of value. That shape I just blocked in in the foreground um, shows me how dark I want to go with my darkest value versus some of the light stuff behind it. That shape is very ugly, by the way, and it will die. So, but it does give a, a full value range in the painting that I'll work within. Um, right away in the painting, I'm, I'm after a read. I want to read as fast as I can. And I've, I've learned this from painters that I admire. Um, they always seem to get that read that you can, you can almost step back from the painting and it looks almost done very quickly. And uh, I think that's, I'm always after something like that because then I can, then I feel like I'm working on a picture rather than just scribbling around and trying to make some magic happen and, you know, something abstract like that. There goes that shape, by the way. It will be replaced with something better, hopefully. Um, yeah, so readability right away is important to me. And you'll see me zooming in and out. I've probably done it already, but I zoom way out of the picture just to see if it reads. Um, this is something I learned from uh, one of my favorite painters by the name of Scott Christensen. He's a traditional oil plein air painter. And uh, I actually had the privilege of studying with him early this year and in his, in his plein air workshop. And he would have us do uh, very quick, small paintings. Like we would do, we would take a 10 by 12 canvas, split it into quarters and do like four paintings on one canvas. And uh, in like 20, 30 minutes, just very quick, trying to capture the light that we saw and uh, this is with oil paint. So we'd bring them in and he would look at them from like 20 feet away and he was just looking for that readability because that's really, your picture is made of shapes and values and that's what makes a painting read, shapes and values. And if you can get those big shapes and values right, you, you know, you'll have a painting that reads and then you can put all the detail you want into it or you can put no detail at all. It's up to your own personal taste. Um, so that's what I'm after right away. And um, this painting, not that this painting has the strongest read right now, but it does read as something. I can tell what it is I'm painting. I'm working on all four corners of the picture, and uh, I will just bring it up. And again, it started as abstract shapes. I had no idea what I was putting down at first. I was almost a little mindless, like a zombie painting. And then I, would, then I will apply logic to that and say, okay, does the, do these abstract shapes make sense? And if yes, I will mold them into something that looks representational, like those mountains and some hints of architecture coming in there uh, in the middle ground right now. Just a little bit of water in the foreground. And I'll just work with this. This is a bit of a trick right here. Uh, sorry, it's a big cheat. It's a lens flare on a new layer. Um, set it to screen mode in Photoshop. This is Photoshop, by the way. Set it to screen mode and uh, just color correct it on top. Do a Gaussian blur over it. And it just helps gives you some color notes that you may not have you know, discovered otherwise. Just throwing some gradients in the foreground. Again, helping me establish a full range of value. Um, I, I like to sketch on one layer, by the way. Um, that lens layer you saw, even though I did that on a second layer, I will instantly flatten that down once I'm happy with it. Just because I don't like to be bogged down by technical stuff when I paint. Um, mostly because I like to paint traditionally more so, and you don't have layers there, so when I work digitally, I like to just keep it on one layer. Um, again, just bringing up, bringing up shapes. What I'm working on here is sort of that middle ground uh, foliage covered cliff that w up until now was just an abstract shape, and now I'm just applying some kind of logic to it, um, putting some color notes in it. And you'll notice that the painting is fairly grayed right now. This is typical of how I start 
as well, uh, from a sketch to a finished matte painting, um, I start grade down and I add color to that. So I'm always adding color to the palette. If you start too saturated, you'll, you'll simply have nowhere to go. You won't, like if you, if, like for example, the glow around that sun, it looks pretty red in this painting, but it's actually very grayed down. If I were to start this painting with like a really saturated red there, I would have nowhere to go. I couldn't put color notes into that. Um, I could only go grayer and that's a huge limitation. So to, to counter that, I always start grayer and add color to it. And this whole painting, uh, I, I think you'll find your palettes will be, just look a little more mature, I guess, for lack of a better word, uh, when you do it that way. So right now what I'm doing with this soft brush is I, I am adding some more saturated, saturated reds and yellows into those fields there, just as color notes, just to vibrate a little bit with the grayer colors that are on there. Um, and I find, you know, you get a more effective color picture that way. Again, I learned that from guys like Scott Christensen. John Carlson is another one. If you haven't read his book, it's called Guide to Landscape Painting. He's another plein air paint painter, um, deceased now. But that's a great book. And he talks about painting with a reserve. And what he means by that is a reserve in color so you can always add more color or you can always go lighter or you can always go darker. You're never exhausting your reserves. Um, it's like... Uh, sending troops into battle. You wouldn't send all your troops into one battle and then just to find yourself being attacked from the other end and you have nowhere to go, right? So it's the same type of thing. And uh, okay, so what am I doing now? Just refining that architecture. I added some lights in there, some um, like man-made lights just to add a bit of a narrative to this painting. And uh, I find that's effective just to tell a little bit of a story like, yeah, there are people who live here. I don't know, I'm just making it up. It probably sucks. Um, what I just did there is I made a color balance layer, uh, what do you call those, adjustment layer, a color balance adjustment layer, and I roofed the saturation on it. If you rewind a bit, you'll see that the whole painting just turned really red for a second. But then I made a layer mask on that, and now I'm painting into that layer mask to reveal where I want those saturated colors. And uh, that's another Photoshop trick um, that I picked up. And uh, I then just hazed out some of the background just because that sun is, we're almost looking directly into the sun and it's gonna, the, hit, the glare from the sun is going to really unify a lot of the colors back there. You're not gonna get a whole lot of, you're certainly not gonna get very many complementary colors back there. You're just gonna, it's gonna be washed in that red haze. And from there I will vibrate in some blues from the sky just for color effect. You'll see me do that soon. Um, some highlights just glinting off the sun. It just creates a relationship with the light source. But don't, highlights are really easy to overdo and I probably just overdid them by adding those three highlights way back there. A little too repetitive, but um, uh, I'm just not gonna worry too much about it for now. Uh, and just working it up from abstract shapes in the beginning, applying logic to that, and just from there applying your knowledge of color to, and value to that and you might say well how do I learn about value and color how do I learn how to control that well my answer to you would be go outside and paint because that's where the answers are they're they're outside they're in nature nature's got everything and if you can learn to boil down nature very quickly in like a 20 minute thumbnail painting you will find that when you come back into Photoshop you are now drawing from a library of images and a library of light scenarios that you've captured outdoors you know I'm not just I don't magically know what colors to use. I, I have stuff like this built up in my mind from painting outdoors. Um, this is a little bit of contrast at the end, adjustments, and uh, checking values. And this painting is pretty much done. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this was about 40 minutes compressed down to 10 minutes, which is pretty rapid for me. I usually take a little longer, but just for the sake of quick demo, I thought I would do it like that. And pretty much there it is. That's the that's the sketch. I, I might work on this a little more after this recording because I'm not too happy with some of the stuff going on in the right hand side of the frame. It's a little little unresolved compared to the left hand side, and the architecture is like totally different. So it doesn't really make sense. So I'll probably adjust some of that. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.